增益、兴荣、发大财，或者升官，种种的。Send from the Buddha to bless their business. A lot of them are staying on the outside, on the、um, appearance, but the core of Buddhism is not there. Last week, I have、uh, briefly introduced、uh, Shyamuni Buddha. Uh, the um, conditions. Uh, why why do Buddhism uh want to renounce the world? A lot of people might ask this question. Living in the uh this good environment as a prince. Because he will also inherit his、uh, father's、um, his father's kingdom.、Uh, he has a good wife.、Uh, and、uh, they also have、uh, received many、uh, protection and love from the people.、But、why does Buddha want to be、uh, a monk? Last time,、uh, I have、uh, briefly introduced、uh, four conditions uh, uh, why Buddha want to be a monk. Four conditions because、uh, they all saw the old man,、uh, death, Sramana, so ill age, death, Sramana, and sickness. The Buddha say, as long as we overcome the、uh, cycle of birth, age, illness, and death, only then we'll be able to achieve happiness. Because no one can overcome the death、uh, in this world.、Uh, we are bound to leave this world the moment we are existing here. Because this time it keeps going forward. So Buddha has observed this um, mess, uh this, how to say um, inevitability of life. Hence, he started to ah、uh, determine how do we ah、uh, overcome this endless cycle. So that's why he will become a monk. Only then he will be able to give us a a, a brief. Uh, summary on why people have, uh, you know, do that. So this is just a brief introduction. Ah.、Uh, so now we are just have a brief、uh, introduction of Buddha. The creators of、uh, main founding of Buddhism is by Shyamuni Buddha. It's about two hundred, five hundred, two thousand five hundred years ago. Uh, Buddha, uh, with his uh, five, uh, five uh, bhikshu, the monk, uh, formed the Dharma. The Buddha Dharma Sangha. So they all formed the Triple Gems. The foundation of Triple Gem, the condition that led to it, is from there. It's in there. So, when we were talking about the um ah、uh, the foundation of Triple Gem, until now, since the five monk attained Arahant. So currently, it has been three thousand years since that happens. I'm not going to introduce too much、uh, on the examples. Why? Because we only have one session per week, such a short time for an hour. It's not enough、uh, to go too deep in this. Because last time. I have、uh, and also the previous time when we met face to face, we also have talked about this. So I'm not going to repeat to、uh, on this、uh, respect. 
I will leave the time uh, for other contents. Uh, uh, so to actually understand Buddhism itself. We all can see. So this uh, BC, 624 BC, uh, lunar calendar, the 8th of April, is the birthday of Buddha. Most Buddhists, uh, during this time, in Sanskrit is called Buddha Purnima, we are usually celebrate the birthday of Buddha. So usually the ceremony that we use to celebrate his birthday is by bathing Buddha, uh, to bathe the baby prince Siddhartha using the water. So it represents uh, purify our tainted heart, wash it away, wash away the taint so that our heart returns to its purity. So every year in uh, Buddhism, so communities, uh, we always celebrate this event, which is called Vesak Day. Also, there is a day that we also celebrate the day he become Buddha. So the, the celebrate the day of Buddha becoming you know, Prince Siddhartha becoming Buddha, and the day where he go into Nirvana. Those are the common celebrations that were held by all Buddhist communities. Why do we persist to celebrate that? Because we do not forget our original teachers, our founding teachers. If there is no Shakyamuni Buddha, there is no Buddhism in this world. And also, Buddhism is quite different from other religions. I was also uh, slowly explain to you, gradually explain to you about that. So this whole thing, the point is to understand, to experience and to remind remembrance of his compassion, of his caring for all beings, us, of his existence that brings the path to, for us to enlighten and liberate from suffering so that we can live a full, fulfilling, happy life. That's why we celebrate our teacher. We all know about his birth place in India, in northern uh, Indian subcontinent, Nepal, in the present day Nepal. It's in the south of the Himalaya mountain. In that country, there is a kingdom called Kapilavatsu. This is the kingdom where he was born in, and this is in present-day Nepal. His father, his father, which is also the king of this kingdom, is called the Sudodana. Uh, Chinese, they translate directly the meanings of this Sanskrit word. Uh, the mother of the Buddha, we call it Moye, or in Sanskrit, Maya. Uh, she's a queen, so we call them Maya Devi, also the mother of Buddha. Unfortunately, uh, Maya, Queen Maya, after giving birth to Buddha, she passed away seven days after the birth. And uh, after her passing, she born into the Tramsakaya heaven, which is the heaven where the the, 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 the you know the heavenly beings we talked about last week was. Um, third 
level of the heaven from us. So, so they are one day in that Trump, Trump Saka, uh, the Sakya King's um, heaven is equal to 1,000 years in our world. So <laughs> think about that in this perspective. It's been 3,000 years, according to the Chinese calendar, since a Buddha was born. If every 100 years in their heaven equals to our 1,000 years, she only, oh wait, 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 one day equals to our 1,000 years, she only experienced like a month, I think, uh, in the heaven throughout these 3,000 years of human history. She has actually, she actually had a vow before. I just want to uh, introduce briefly. We know now, you also Dara, I mean the Queen Maya is the mother of Buddha. Her vow actually is to become the mother of all Buddhas. So, in how does that work? She means that she wants to be the person who bears the Buddhas into the world of all directions. So every time Buddha comes to the world to give someone uh, before the Buddha begin the turning of Dharma wheel, she will always be there, give the birth to Buddha, uh, and then she will always leave soon after the Buddha was born. So this is just some insight for you guys. So Queen Maya is not a normal people. That's why we call her Great Maya. This is for us the Buddhists to have a concept. This is all bodhisattvas actually. Consumer. All they're doing is to design this for us so that we can learn and benefit from it. Buddhism. Um, when Buddha's mother left the world, she has a sister. Her name, I haven't put it on, but um, how to say, her sister also has a name quite similar to it, and she uh, also married to the king, Sudodana, and now become the foster mother of the uh, Prince Siddhartha. So when Prince Siddhartha reached the age of 16, he married the beautiful Yasodhara, his wife, and they married. So he was very, very young when he was married, or back in that, back, back, back in that days, 16 years of age, back then, back then. Unlike now, uh, uh, it's too young, it's at least 30 years of age. Yeah. After he born, uh, he uh, has they have a children called Rahula. That's a really brief, simplified uh, introduction to Buddhism, to Buddha himself. Uh, that's it for the history of Buddha himself. Mm. So, so, you know, like we know like who is Shaiman Buddha, his history, who, where did he born, who took care of him, uh, who's his mother, father, where was his kingdom. Uh, this is the revision. Also, I would like to uh, explain to everyone, after Buddha become uh, Buddha, actually attained enlightenment, all his family becomes monks. <laughs> Think about it. His foster mother, stepmother becomes the first bhikshuni, the first uh, nun in Buddhism. His son becomes a monk at nine years old. Uh, all his, uh, how to say, cousins, uh, because he's the eldest of them all. Uh, Ananda, they're all his cousins. Yubao has like six or seven 
cousins or siblings also become a monk. The only person in his direct, you know, branch of his family is his own father. However, even though the king, Sudodana, is not a monk, has not become a monk, but he also Chan Ami Taba Buddha's name to go to Pure Land at the end of his life. So you can see from Buddha himself, he uh, not only help other beings, he also, you know, bring his own family to attain Arahant, at least Arahant, the level of Arahant. That means they are no longer, all his family, no, direct, direct branch, no longer be affected by the life and death. Think of us in our current era. Who wants to go to become a monk? <laughs> no one wants to be a monk in current times. You don't believe? Ask Alex, ask Michael, ask Dylan. Do you want to be a monk? Impossible. What is it? Not easy. Therefore, to become a monk, it's a in Buddhism, it's a it's a big duty. It's a big call calling because you a true ordained monk, a true monk who has the vow, they always give themselves to the society so they can serve everyone in the society. No matter how hard they will continue to serve everyone. Become a monk is not about enjoying you know, respect. It's not a career. It's a mission. It's to give your life, all of your life, to the to all the beings. Like, just like Buddha did, to, to serve all uh, living beings. Even though we are not a monk, we should also have that kind of heart. How do I become a, a good example to this society? How do I uh, bring a good impression uh, of Buddhism towards uh, the society? So let the society have a good, positive empowering uh, reputation. The first thing, if you want to achieve that goal, is ourself. The first step is ourself. I am a Buddhist. I truly am cultivating Buddhism. If I am, I have to be a good example. I have to set up a right example. Only then other people can have confidence when they hear, okay, learning Buddhism actually is good. If we just doing self-cultivation, like if we just cultivate like, uh, like chanting and chanamitapho, which is good. However, when we encounter situations uh, and we become, you know, angry, we show that temple and we become, you know, uh, greedy or angry and all that. So people will be like, this is not real. Uh, if we can be respectful to elders and to love and respect our elders, our friends and people around us, uh, to give them a, a feeling of warmth when they're around you. Only then they will be, a, 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 how to say, attracted to Buddhism. They were like, oh, learning Buddhism makes such a good person. So I want to learn Buddhism. Therefore, you know, Buddha himself also has uh, led all his family to become a monk, and not just monk, an arahant. So after introducing the founders of Buddhism, now we have to start uh, what is Buddhism? Someone has uh, opened the, the link in the... 
the translation channel. Sorry, guys. Okay, thank you. So this um, venerable is talking about the Buddhism itself. What is Buddhism about? Some people say Buddhism is a religion. Some people say Buddhism is a culture. Some people say religion is a science, a high level science, a high science, cutting edge science, like quantum physics. Some people say Buddhism is a politics. It's about politics, devil in politics. Some people ask me, how big is the um, area of command or kingdom of Buddha? And I, I, I just respond to him, Buddha is not a government official. Why would you, um, you know, think of it in that way? So this is a um, misunderstanding. Some people ask me this question as well. Uh, how big is his uh, area of influence, I mean, control in Sydney? How many people follow him? They use that kind of mindset to think about Buddha. Some people say uh, Buddhism is a philosophy. Also, uh, it was recognized in, by the world. At Buddhism. What do they recognize? Shaiyamani Buddha is the world's most uh, respect, uh, how is it, comprehensive and most sophisticated system of philosophy. These are actually recognized by the world. And the sutra recorded from Buddha Samon is the pinnacle of the world's philosophy. The peak. So not, nothing can top Buddhist philosophy, basically, that's what it means. It's logic and it's sophistication, the how they construct everything. It's beautiful. For example, just example, uh, next. Uh, all the learned individuals, educated people, uh, or having passion for learning. Are you one of those people who are having passion for learning? Uh, people ask, uh, how Amitabha Buddha built Buddha, built, built the pure land. If you are eager to learn, you ask this question. Uh, why do 10 Buddhas, Buddhas of 10 direction, praise Amitabha alone? And why did he build pure land at all? So those are curiosity, passion to learn more. So this go across race, religion. Uh, they all want to know and to unravel, you know, the mysteries of universe. Apologies for the typo. Uh, they want to know where did, you know, where did we come from? Where did the world come from? Where did the universe come from? Uh, what's the origin, you know, origin story? They want to know everything, including themselves. We all have that. Um, want to know. Why does Earth has human beings? Why among human, all the living beings, why do we have distinction of human animals and all that, plants? So those, are all, those are all part of this question. We all do have that um, inquisitive um, mind for this, or part of us. Uh, when I learned Buddhism back then, uh, I, I asked, because back then I was Catholic, I asked uh, my mom, uh, Mom, you say that I was created by God, but I was born by you. So how, is that, how does that work? Before I was a monk, I keep asking this question. No one can answer it to me, for me. No one. Since uh, we are created by God, by the doctrine, then who created the, the God himself? 
So I keep asking this question back then. How did our uh, solar system come into being? Our galaxy come into being? Why do human have life and death? Hmm. Why don't God, if he can do that, create a perfect world where there's no life and death? If he has all that power that was described in this doctrine, why didn't that happen? Why do we have all these sufferings? No one can answer for me. This is a question that has been in my heart and mind all the time back then. After they die, where do they go? When people come to this world, why are they so much difference? Good looking, or someone are not so good looking. Why some born into a family of wealth, position, power, born with a golden spoon, silver spoon. But why does some does not have that privilege? Why some people uh, born in a country uh, that are well and affluent, wealthy and affluent? Why does some born with such a poverty stricken place? No one can answer for me. This is characteristic of a eager to learn. I also want to know. What do I want the Chan Amitabha for? Why do I want to go to Pure Land? Why does ten Buddha, all Buddhas of ten directions, sorry, that means all Buddhas everywhere, point us, point the direction to, you know, to 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 Pure Land? You know, why not their Pure Land? Why why to the Amitabha Pure Land, including our Buddha? Uh, if none can answer this question, then it's not worth learning. So this also tells us we need to start uh, thinking, critically thinking. How do we resolve these very fundamental problems? The Buddha, uh, for most people, we might also think, we might think about, uh, have a good, it's like for most people, people want a happy life in their current existence. That also requires a, 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 a inquisitive mind as well. Like, how do I build a happy family? What is the component required to build a happy family? How to find a good spouse? How to provide? How to live together? So, Shaimani Buddha, uh, whole life of Buddha, it's about this. It's talking about this. Uh, where do human came from? After human die, where do they go? Why do we have this environment in, in our world? Why is the human environment or natural environment like this? Also, the, the um, truth in this universe they have uh, spoken very clearly. If you look at the uh, sutra, we will uh, slowly uh, introduce this point to you so that you have a, the, the, the ideas about um, these finer points in Buddhism and what Buddhism is serving as. Also, these questions, we would like to continue. Mm. Today, if someone asks us, uh, uh, someone really asking you in front of you, especially as a Buddhist, be it lay monastics or uh, you know elders or youngs youngers, they ask what is Buddhism about. How do you answer it? What does Buddhism is? What is Buddhism talking about? Number two, a Buddha has such a vast collection of sutras. There are 84,000 methods of cultivation. Uh, some describe it as that. Which religion has such a big volume, more than the library actually, if you put it there, has such a big volume of sutra? Most people have only one Bible or few kitabs, uh, the, the, the sutras. But we have, a, we have a, a library worth of collection. 
So what are the goals of Buddhism? This teaching, what are they trying to achieve by giving us this teaching? So how do we answer these questions? We also need to be able to answer well. Otherwise, a lot of people will misunderstand Buddhism. We thought we are just a, you know, superstitious uh, old religion, polytheistic religion. A lot of people thought you are superstitious. Uh, come to uh, Buddha chanting hall, uh, pray for the God called Buddha so that uh, they give you blessing on top. Uh, is that Buddhism? Or we'll sit down and chant Amitabha in the chanting hall and then chant Amitabha all the time. Uh, if we don't understand why we do that, a lot of people would think, is that, is that all about Buddhism? Is that Buddhism? So we must understand why we're doing that. So what is Buddhism? Let's continue. Uh, we just need to uh, uh, break it down one by one, really, to the finest point, so that we can really understand it in, in, in heart. How is it helping our society? How is it helping myself? How is it helping my the people around us, our world? So first, Buddhism, what Buddhism is not, it's not a religion. Uh, so we do pray to Buddha, which looks like we are worshipping, but we are not worshipping a god, actually. We're, pay, we're just giving a respect, a highest form of respect. So it's not a philosophy, it's not a science. It is a well-rounded, all-encompassing education. So it takes everything good about you know education and put it in that Buddhism and more. Why? Because it gives us wisdom. Wisdom to discern from right, right from wrong, wrong from right. Right and wrong, wrong and right, like what Leo Fan said. Uh, also, uh, you know, uh, give you ways to attain longevity, health, uh, fortune, uh, infinite fortunes, infinite merits. They are all in there. Your future. How your future looks like. What's the outlook of your life? Buddhism is a light that shines that path for you. So that you are not, you know, carelessly walking into the path that causes you more suffering. Although there might be uh, difficulties, obstacles in the time, but it will help you in the face of this obstacle, with all these uh, troubles. You obey, you're able to build up a right um, uh, system to overcome it, mental system. For example, marriage. A lot of people, especially in the 70s and on, but this modern times, a lot of people are taking this like a joke. You know, after a few days of marriage, few months of marriage, they divorce. As if it, you know, they just do it for the fun of it. Or sometimes when people harm us, saying something hurtful, defaming, uh, how do we resolve that properly? What are the ways to resolve this properly? Also, Buddhism, in the larger scale, it can harmonize our society. It will help the society to harmonize if everyone learns it so that the people can live in peace and also puri by purifying our heart. Number three, it dispels the ignorance that led to more suffering, creating of more suffering to us. Uh, so how do we how do we stop creating miseries for ourselves or stop others from creating miseries? Education enlightens, education enlightens everyone. 
no one can leave this education. Needs. If you want to live a happy uh, life, say in Australia, it's a form of fortune. You are able to born in for Australia or migrate to Australia and live this happy life or stable life. This is a fortune. But how do you use the fortune? Ah. We need to cultivate. How do we earn respect and love from the society? We also need to be educated on its cause and effect to get there. Uh, look at someone with a beautiful, happy family, and we want a very uh, good relationship with our spouse, with our uh, parents, parents of our spouse, and also our children, our siblings. They all require education for everyone to work together. So it's all in there. That's why all encompassing and well-rounded. Therefore, Buddhism is an education. And it educates what? What do they educate? That's another point we will bring later. So what we know is what Buddhism is not a religion, not a philosophy, not a science, but an education. So how do we get started? Why does Buddhism, Buddha so put so much emphasis on teaching? For 49 years, um, in his period as a Buddha, in our world, this, uh, in, in, appears as Buddha in this world. Uh, he, everything about him is education, an example. You know, we learn by example, right? He is an example for us to learn. Nothing he says, he moves, even sleeping, sitting, they are all a way to educate us. Let's continue to learn what Buddhism educates. So, from where we understand, start to understand, start to get the ideas, Buddhism is actually an education. Like, what do we find out? Like, because people might ask, since you keep saying Buddhism is education, where can you see it? Where can you find it in our conduct in Buddhism society? First, the way uh, we address each other or address the Buddha in Buddhism. Usually, uh, we call our Shaimuni Buddha as the founding teacher or the original teacher or the foundational teacher. Mm. Just now we did that. Namo Ben Shi Shijia Moni. So this is why uh, Shi in Chinese, uh, translated to English, is teacher. Ben, in this case, it means to root, our root teacher. So put it in um, clearer English, it's our. Uh, original first teacher. Yeah. So, this teacher of ours who has gone through many lives of you know, giving, uh, he has gone through a lot of troubles. Uh, let's not talk about, past, uh, talk about Buddha himself in this uh, history page. How many years he has gone, how many paths he has discovered and not working, just to find the right way for us to gain enlightenment. So, Shaimu Buddha is a teacher who founded this teaching for us. So, in front of Buddha, we address ourselves as students. Uh, we call ourselves like uh, uh, in Chinese, Dizi means student. Dizi Dylan, Dizi Alex, Dizi Michael. So in a proper way of addressing, we address ourselves like that. So our relationship with Buddha is a, one of a teacher and a student. Buddha is our teacher, we are his student. 
像今天我们小的时候去学校。Like when we were young, we go to the school. Who taught us? Teacher. Without our teacher teaching us, why do why do we go to school? What's the whole point of school? Yeah. If student wants to be successful, to be great, they have to learn closely what teacher has taught them. Shaimun Buddha is the same. Now we are his student. Since we call him his student, our teacher, our founding teacher is Buddha, Shaimun Buddha himself. So this relationship is only is quite unique to Buddhism in comparison to other religions. Or, yeah. In other, in not other, in religion category, um, they are not talking about uh, this. They don't talk about student teacher because they center around the relationship of a father and a son. Or parent and child. God, and that means it frames the relationship between God and human. This religion is like that. You are my son because I created you, right? I give birth to you. I created you. This world is created by me. This genesis is by me. So. You are my son. So such a relationship happens. You have to hear me because I'm your elder, your father, or mother. So Buddhism is not like that. So Buddhism educates without prejudice. As long as you're willing to learn. Buddha will not refuse. If you don't want to learn, Buddha will not punish you. He will just walk away. Uh, I don't want to learn Buddhism. I want to believe other religion or learn other religion. Will he say, no, you cannot leave. You will be punished to hell. No, they don't say that. We don't do that. Is there any sutra that Buddha say, uh, you must... Uh, you are a betrayer, you are a Judith, Judas, uh, you will be punished. No, Buddha is always um, a court according to condition. If you're willing, I'll be here, I'll help. If you don't want, uh, the door is there, you are free to leave. Because Buddha has no prejudice, Buddha has no um, separation and all that. They have, he doesn't have that concept. He will not punish you, he will not put you in hell or condemn you. Uh, he wouldn't say, uh, you are my uh, uh, creation. But it does not have work like that. So, so in Buddhism, uh, something uh, why it's so unique. This is what. Since we understand and affirm or, or root Buddhism in the category of education, uh, uh, let's talk about education itself. Then. Uh, what are the part of Buddhism that we keep practicing that shows that it is a uh, religion? I mean, a, 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 a education. First thing, Namo Ben Shi, I translate to English, founding teacher. Shayamuni Buddha. It, one one look at itself, it's a teacher. Now I'll break it down one by one, word by word for you. To show that why Buddha takes such heavy emphasis on education. First, Namo. Namo Bensu, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Siddhikabha Buddha, Namo Avalokiteswara. Right. So what does Namo mean? It's a Sanskrit word. In Chinese or in English, it means to return, uh, go home. 
to reform our thoughts, to reflect on our past wrongdoings, and then return to our true nature that is good, pure. Because why do we have to return? Because we all have commit a lot of faults, a lot of habits, small habits that are not wholesome. And if these habits were allowed to accumulate untouched and unmanaged, it will become a karma, which will cause a lot of trouble in our future life. Buddha does not fear that his student does not, uh, he does not fear that his student make mistake. He fear that his student make mistake and not returning, not correcting, you know, leaving the mistake fetters. Uh, the right attitude is, I must change my focus if I discover it. Uh, a lot of people, a lot like myself, I also have, you know, a temper. Yeah. Blair, uh, we, we, we might you know easily give up give into the temple uh, flare uh, and if we allow this you know bad temple to continue it will cause a lot of our um, loved ones around us to feel suffering when they are with us they will gradually leave us one by one or gossips and other bad habits, common habits. A lot of people gossip because they like to pick on people's fault, people's uh, uh, wrong, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the mistakes. They like to pick on people's mistakes. Uh, cause in harmony among the groups. Another example is swear words. Harsh words. This is a few examples of uh, what not to do when we dabble with the society in everyday capacity. Uh, the core of it is, have I done something that caused harm and pain towards others, and discomfort towards others? So from the name of Buddha himself, reminds us this. When, to, when you read Nam Mo, you must think of return back, return from the faults. I must change myself. Only then my life can be as bright as the Buddha. I must change myself, refresh and revolutionize myself. Only then my life can be better. That's what Na Mo Ben Shi, founding teacher, Shayamuni Buddha. It's from today, from now on, uh, I want to uh, truly love the people around me. So that, uh, if I love them, I don't want to cause harm to them. I don't want to cause them heartbroken. Uh, I don't want to cause my parents to fear. Uh, for me, or because of my behavior, worry about me. So shakya, what does shakya mean? It's also a Sanskrit. In, in English, it's called compassionate, a loving heart, caring heart towards others. It teaches us to treat everyone, all beings, with compassion, with love, with, you know, trying to remove them from their current suffering and give them happiness. Especially in this era, a lot of people lacks one thing, compassionate. Heart, a heart of considerateness. Only because of this insufficiency of being considerate, we have this kind of society nowadays. Everyone's guessing, second guessing, third guessing each other's, backstepping, a lot of hating each other, sometimes hate the world, 
in the school, stuff like that. If you are like Bodhisattva Guan Yin, if we adopt an attitude like Bodhisattva Guan Yin, are we even going to uh, be, you know, angry towards people, pick on people's fault? Even though we might not be 100% like Bodhisattva Guan Yin, if we can learn like her 10%, his 10%, uh, the way he look at the world, like Guan Yin is always looking at people with a good part of the people, best part of the people. I might not even be able to help them in current circumstance, but I can have the good mind, positive uh, meta, you know, a, a positive uh, mindset to them uh, with a prayer towards them so that they may be well, they may be good, they may be kind, they may be healthy, their family may be in peace. We might not be able to do it now to help them now, but we always have must have that heart uh, all the time. So this is how we plant compassionate seeds in our heart. The Buddha's name himself is the same. It's, why do we keep chanting his name? It's not for the sake of chanting. It's the sake of completing this virtue, reminding us to be compassionate all the time. A true person who is 100% compassionate. Have you ever seen Bodhisattva Guan Yin being angry, throwing temple? Have you seen Buddha drawing temple in, in the records? Ah, there's one, there's a, there's a story, actually, story of Buddha. Uh, there was a, you know, people who does not follow him. Uh, he went in front of Buddha because he does not understand Buddhism and he keep scold Buddha and scold and scold and scold, use all kind of words. Buddha is not moving, just sitting there. Scold, that guy scold until he's tired. And he asks, Buddha say, I keep scolding you, I keep swearing at you, why aren't you responding? And then Buddha replies, ah, I don't feel anything. And he replied with a smile, like a joyful smile, a cheerful one, like, hey, yeah, I don't feel anything. But if you are in place of Buddha himself, what will you feel? What will you react? <laughs> if some people ask you, Michael, uh, myself, uh, uh, pick, pick on you, pick on you one by one directly with that force of ton, you will immediately like jump and angry. Uh, you will start to think, who are you? Uh, you're not my dad. Uh, you're, my, you're not my mom. Uh, some might even some might even lift up a knife in retaliation, you know. Uh, yeah, humans like that. Mm. Sometimes, uh, yeah, there, there was a time when I was sitting in a plane. I heard a small, small incident, mm. a small thing like the stewardess are not. Are not, are not, um, maybe you know, neglected a little bit in their services. The um, one of the passengers stand up and keeps scolding and scolding and scolding and scolding. If we are, you know, learn the teachings of Buddha, should we become like that? Some people, unfortunate people, they were in that environment. All they know about is complain, 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 complain. When they're young, they are exposed to complain. And then when they grow up, they become that kind of person. Scold and complain, scold and complain. Buddha is not like that. On the other hand, Buddha uh, always have the heart of tranquility, joy, bliss. In the normal depiction of Buddha, you will not see Buddha with an angry face. No, that will not. So, Satya means compassionate. Muni means purity. So, purity in what? When we face everything, all kinds of people, all 
things or matters or you know businesses our mind must be clear must be very clear what is right what is wrong what must i do what must i not do if we can do that all these society problems divorce uh, all the crimes uh, especially in marriage uh, why marriage cannot last a lot of people are murdered by lust uh, by temptations uh, they cannot hold on to what they have to the to, 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 you know to be uh, content a lot of them lost the purity lost the money and get dragged along by the temptation of the outside some people are supposed to have a happy life They're supposed to have a very uh, good life because of one error and their mind was muddled because of temptations they give it all so this alone name of buddha alone teaches this what about the second point this is from the name of buddha from today uh, after this lesson uh, when we chant the name of buddha number one what's the name of Buddha tells me. Number one, I mean, must return. Namo, I must namo. I must return from the faults, from the unwholesome deeds, the wrong deeds, to prevent doing bad deeds. Go back to my true nature. So much sutra given by Buddha. What's the core of it? What's the key point of it? Uh, to reform our faults, to return to our good self, true nature. Yeah, we must investigate this. <laughs> we'll continue next week. Uh, it has been an hour already. This is how I uh, got interested in Buddhism. In a past, I don't really like religion. I mean, I'm not interested in religion. I learned Hinduism. I learned Taoism. I learned Catholics. Christianity, why do I end up choosing Buddhism? Because all the answers are in there. All my answers were answered. All my questions were answered. It's just that we don't know about it. He has already left all the answers one by one, in one book by one book for us. We don't learn. Isn't that a waste? It brings us to in a perspective where, where we should do it, what we should do to get a happy life therefore i think it's very important for me to introduce you to you it's very interesting uh, i'll pick some main point uh, because there's too much um sutra really a lot uh, so I'll, po I'll pick main points for you interesting point for you so today that's it uh, next week next wednesday same time 8 30 uh, okay Okay. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Teacher. Teacher.嗯，师傅，师傅不累我就我就OK了。累不累？累不累？师傅不累我就我就OK了。师傅不累我就我就OK了。师傅不累我就我就OK了。师傅不累我就我就OK了。师傅不累我就我就OK了。师
尽是一报身，往生极乐国。谢谢大家，阿弥陀佛。好，下个星期见啊，下个星期见。OK， OK， Good bless you。OK， 阿弥陀佛， Good bless you。OK， OK， 拜拜，拜拜，拜拜，拜拜。拜拜，好，拜拜。Thank you for coming.